Hello, guys. Welcome back. This is the third part of the research philosophy lecture. And then in this part, we're going to look at two exercises that I have designed. Hopefully, by going through these exercises, you have a better idea of different philosophies. Okay, the first exercise is a quiz. I have put the link in the middle of the slide and uh, you should able to be able to click on this link or if you're not, you can copy and paste this URL in um, your, oh well, <laughs> in any um, browser that you use. Okay, let's have a quick look at these questions all together. All right, hopefully you have a visual on the, this, this quiz that um, I put here. There are a couple of questions. These questions, there is no right or wrong answers. So no matter which one you choose, you, you, you don't get a higher mark or lower mark uh, depending on which one you choose. No, that's not the case. So here, the uh, questions here are to help you identify what type of philosopher you are or which philosophy you are naturally towards to. So for example, whether you are more of a positivist or whether you are more of an interpretivist. Um, if you have already watched uh, the videos of the previous two parts, you would know that I am more of an interpretivist. So here you can help yourself trying to uh, identify which philosophy you are more fond of, you, you would more prefer um, you know, by, by nature. <laughs> okay, so here, um, Please spend some time, read through the questions and try to give yourself a score, uh, like how much you are disagree with the statement, each statement and how much you agree with each statement. So that by the end of it, um, I'm going to tell you which philosophy you are more towards to, okay? Now, please pause this video and finish up this quiz. Okay. Um, if you hear this sentence from me, uh, that means you already finished this quiz. If you're not, please <laughs> go back to the quiz and, and come back when you, when you have finished it. And here, because uh, I'm going to give you the key for the quiz. Um, you would notice that for each question, um, there are three answers, three statements or three answers. So all the answer A, are associated with one um, philosophy and on all the answer Bs are associated with um, another philosophy. So here you, from the key, you can, you can see that all the answer A's, if you are more agree to the statement for the answer A, you are more of a positivist. If you are somewhere in the middle, so you are more of a critical realism. And if you tick higher, like agree more to the answer C's, you are more of an interpretivist like me. Okay. And um, if you look at the bottom part of this slide, you would see this arrow shows the extremes. Okay. So at one end, it says positivism. The other end, it says interpretivism and critical realism is somewhat in the middle as I put it in the second part of the lecture and um, well have, 
I just want to readdress it again that critical realism is somehow in the middle, but it it you shouldn't justify it like that because critical realism itself is also a philosophy. It has its own and ontology and epistemology. So when you are justifying why choosing critical realism as your um, choosing philosophy for your, let's say your dissertation, and uh, don't just say that it's in the middle <laughs> um, between positivism and interpretivism. It, it, it try to look for its an uh, ontology and epistemology and then relate that to your own uh, research question of your dissertation. Okay, um, after finishing this quiz, I'd like to invite you to reflect on the quiz. So reflect on your answers. So from the answers, can you tell what, you know, which philosophy you are more you are more kind of towards to whether you are more towards to a positivism side or more towards to a an interpretivism side or you are just in the middle okay so there there is no priority on or which one is is better and um, no nothing is better we are looking for the most suitable or most preferred um, philosophy um, that, that you like to use. So like in your dissertation, um, you are expected to justify, and uh, you are expected to first um, let the reader know which philosophy, which research philosophy that your dissertation has chosen. Okay, so you can say that your dissertation has adopted positivism or your dissertation has adopted interpretivism. So that, that's the what bit. And then you are expected to justify why um, positivism, if you have chosen positivism, is suitable for your dissertation. So when we say it's suitable, it is usually related to the nature of your research question, okay? So that are the two things you are expected to write. And for the summative assessment for this module, as well as um, for your dissertation. Okay, but for now, don't worry about these assessments. For now, just have fun exploring what kind of philosopher you are uh, or which philosophy you are more towards to like i have find out myself is more of an interpretivist okay um the second exercise that uh, i want you to do is a set of true or false statements okay so i have listed out nine statements here and please read them one by one and and try to give an answer of whether they are true or not please pause the video now okay um because this video is is pre-recorded so i i, I would not wait uh, i would rely um on that you would pause the video and finish up the exercises uh, at your own time, of course. Um, and now I am going to discuss each of these um, statements. Okay, the first one, positivists use small sample to investigate in depth. This is, force okay um well positivists actually would like to use large samples because they are more kind of a scientific and uh, side and instead of investigating in depth they are more interested in a wide coverage 
Okay, so this statement is the, the correct one could be um, positive, positive is, positivists use large sample. Okay, or you can say interpretivists use small sample to, in, to investigate in depth. The second statement, positivists look at the totality of each situation. This statement is true, okay? Positivism like to, to look at an overall picture of, of, of a phenomenon. So it's look at the totality of each situation, well as interpretivism are more interested in in depth. So instead of um, instead of looking at things in more general sense, interpretivists would look at things in a more in depth. So you could associate these two ways your familiar uh, methods. So positivism, positivism um, method. Um, you can think about doing a questionnaire. Well, as interpretivist method, you can think about an interview. So like when we're doing interviews, we are using small samples compared with questionnaire, right? So for questionnaire, we are more interested to look at the totality of, of a situation. Well, as interview, we are more interested into one small thing, but very, very detailed. So we, so we, and reach a small amount of people, like we have fewer interviewees compared with participants for a questionnaire, but we spend longer time usually with each of the interviewees and ask them a lot of questions and try to dig deeper and deeper. Okay, hope these make sense to you. And the next statement, um, statement three, Interpretivists believe that reality is socially constructed and subjective. Yes, this one is true. Interpretivists, interpretivists, they, 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 they think the, the reality is socially um, distorted. And number four, interpretivists focus on meanings and try to understand what is happening. True again. Yeah, so they Interpretivists, uh, instead of believing a uh, fact or reality, they believe in meanings and they usually believe in multiple meanings. And number five, positivists develop ideas through induction from data. So the key word there is induction, uh, which is wrong. Okay. Um, if you refer back to the slide on positivism, you would see that positivism is usually associated with deductive reasoning instead of inductive reasoning. So the inductive reasoning is usually associated with interpretivist, interpretivism. Okay, so a correct answer for number five would be positivists develop ideas through deduction or interpretivists develop ideas through induction. Okay, so that's the, um, kind of the key words there is between induction and deduction. Number six, positivists are interested in causality and fundamental laws. Yes, yes, compare with interpretivists, yes. They are interested in fundamental laws, they are well, as interpretivists are more interested in a particular, um, so a, a meaning under a particular um, context. Number seven, interpretivists formulate hypotheses and test them. Wrong or false. Uh, it is the positivists who would formulate hypotheses and test them. For interpretivists, so again, thinking about, again, if, if, you, if you still are not familiar with these two philosophy terms, you can think about um, the methods that you're more familiar with. So let's think about the questionnaire and interviews again. Questionnaires, and the un for each question, you already have answers, isn't it? Like, um, 
as we said earlier, like what does happiness mean? You may already give them like four options to choose, like multiple choice type of question. So these four are the uh, pre-assumed answers from you before you even start to ask people to fill the questionnaire. These are your hypotheses. Well, as you, you just want to test your hypothesis is correct. For example, you, 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 uh, you assume that most people would choose the second answer um, out of the four answers you provide them. Well, as for interview uh, method, um, the question style is usually an open-ended question. So instead of providing the four, four options, you, you, you would ask your interviewees directly or open and openly on what, what they think happiness means. So they could actually uh, mention anything. They, they, could, they could talk about anything. Um, some may be covered by the four options mentioned in the questionnaire, or some are way beyond these four options. Um, in this way, for the interview questions, you do not have a pre um, set it answer. So you do not have a hypothesis. Um, your data is purely rely on what your interviewee would tell you. Okay. So here, um, interview, uh, which is guided by interpretivism philosophy, it does not have hypothesis. And questionnaire, which is guided by the positivist, positivism philosophy, they have a hypothesis and they would test the hypothesis. Okay. The next question, question eight, interpretivists believe observer is part of what is observed. Yes, this is correct. So they think it's, it's not, it's not neutral uh, or value free. The observer or the researcher itself could be a part of what is observed. So like the interviewer um, could be a part of your data. Number nine, positivists believe that social science can use the same approaches as the natural sciences. Yes, yes, that's what a positivist would believe. So the way they believe that the way how we study um, social science or human being could be the same as how we study, let's say, machines <laughs> or um, a physical object. Okay, so number nine is true. Right, have you got all correct? Or how much have you got correct? Okay, so um, if you want to review these questions, yeah, feel free to do so. Um, and you can always play back this video to listen to um, how I explained these uh, questions. Um, by the end of today's lecture, I would encourage you to write a few sentences, spend five minutes to write down and anything that you feel, sorry, anything that you feel you have learned from um, listening to my video, the three videos that um, you can find on today's lecture. Anything new to you or maybe some of the terms are not new to you, but you have developed new insights or new new understandings and towards the term that you already know okay and um, that's it of today's lecture and i hope you have learned something uh, from me on research philosophy um, and i hope that you would enjoy the rest of your research method journey and um, bye